In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. God of might, giver every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me. You were the stronger. I'm a laughing daily stock. Everybody's bought. Every time I speak the word, I have to howl and proclaim violence and ruin. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult derision all day long. I used to say I will not think about him. I will not speak in his name anymore. Then there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, for you Thirsting, my body pines for you like a dry, weedy land without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. So I gaze on you. Sanctuary to see your strength and your glory, for your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. My soul is love. Bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. My soul is have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My song clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. My soul
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him, I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviour change, modelled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what is a man to offer in in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, 
And when he does, he will reward each one according to his behavior. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just want to announce there'll be a special collection today, which will happen in a moment for uh, our Father's Day collection. And this is a beautiful opportunity for us to support the retired priests and clergy in our diocese. These have been our spiritual fathers for decades and decades. And this is our chance to support them the way we should and offer them a dignity in their retirement that is what's due to them. So I would ask you to give generously. There will be envelopes there. If you haven't come prepared, you can fill out the envelope. You can also donate online if you need to. Um, please make sure to mention that it, you're from St. Patrick's Cathedral Parish, just so everybody knows that it's coming from here. Thank you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, during my, my time away, as you know, I, w I went to Rome, and just a disclaimer, the next four weeks that I'm here, you'll be hearing a lot of stories uh, of my travels. But as you know, my, my favorite saint is St. Peter, and being so close to St. Peter's Basilica was a good opportunity for me uh, to visit there quite often and pray and ask for his powerful intercession. But whilst I was going around in Rome, there was a particular saint that caught my attention and very much I started to fall in love with her and her name is Saint Helena. If you don't know who Saint Helena is, she is the mother of Constantine the Great. Being the mother of Constantine the Great, who was the first Christian Emperor of Rome, she had all the power in the world. She was so powerful, the most powerful woman during that period. Between the years 326 and 328, she made her way to the Holy Lands, where it was her mission to bring back as many relics of Christ to Rome, which was the center of the known world. So what did she bring back? She brought back the very manger of Jesus, and you can find that in Santa Maria Maggiore. 
And St. John Lateran Basilica, she also brought back the table that Christ celebrated the Last Supper, the very first Mass. It's there. But she's most famous for bringing back the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. When she went to the Holy Land, she found the place. She was directed to where Christ was crucified. And she ordered her soldiers to dig, 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 and there she found three crosses. She then brought a woman who was on the verge of dying and asked her to touch each of the crosses. She touched the first cross, nothing happened. Touched the second cross, nothing happened. And when she touched the third, this woman was miraculously cured and she said, this is the cross. She found the cross, she found the crown of thorns, and she found the nails that pierced our Lord. Now you can find these particular relics when you go to Rome. And the relics of the Holy Cross are found in the Basilica of the Holy Cross in Jerusalem, which is not too far from Santa Maria Maggiore. And when I visited there, the first thing that happened to me was I wept profusely. And every single pilgrim who came into that particular chapel were just weeping. And I thought, I'm pretty sure we were all saying the, the sorrowful mysteries as we were looking at these particular relics. Now the cross for us, dear friends, is so precious. And just looking to the congregation as I'm mentioning this particular relic, I can see some of your jaws drop, and rightly so. This is a treasure of ours, a great treasure. But during the ancient times, the cross wasn't a treasure at all. In fact, it was feared, very feared. Cicero, an a ancient Roman philosopher, used to speak of the crucifixion as a cruel and disgusting punishment. In fact, a few years prior to Jesus coming, there was a Jewish uprising which the Romans quelled. And what did they do to those who, who were leading the uprising? They crucified them and put them all, all the way to, on a road leading up to Jerusalem. Just to, just to remind the people, don't mess with us Romans, we will kill you. And Cicero also spoke about the cross as the men very mention of the crucifixion shouldn't even enter the being of a Roman. It should be far from their mind. Now as I mentioned, dear friends, it's, it's, the cross is beloved to us, but in ancient times it wasn't. You don't speak of crucifixion. You don't speak of death. And so bearing this in mind, dear friends, you can see the apprehension that St. Peter has when Jesus speaks of him dying. And later on, he speaks about the cross. Now you have to ask yourselves, why is Peter so apprehensive to the words of Christ? He's worried because, one, he loves Jesus. He spent all this time with him. Only last week, and in, in this particular time, it's only a few moments prior, he says that Jesus is the Son of the living God. He recognizes that he is the Messiah. But he has something, but he also has something misunderstood, that Christ's kingdom is not supposed to dwell here on earth. It actually goes beyond time and space. And that is what Christ is seeking to promulgate. And that's why Jesus is very, very harsh to St. Peter. It's not simply that he loves him, but it, that he doesn't, that St. Peter does not recognize the great, great mission that Christ has. And that's why he says, Get behind me, Satan. There was one particular priest who told me that if Satan was really, really smart, he would have sought to distance Jesus Christ from the cross. Because we all know, and we celebrate this every single year during Holy Week, that it is through the cross that we have salvation. Only through the cross there was a debt to be paid. And Christ paid that debt through his life taking on our humanity, dying on the cross, and rising from the dead. There was a debt. And so you can see Peter's great apprehension, dear friends. But as I mentioned, Christ knows the story. He knows what he needs to do. He needs to go to Jerusalem to die in order to save us, to draw us closer towards heaven, towards his very self. Now why this is so important for us, dear friends, is because we ask ourselves, what is the very purpose of our lives? The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is Catholicism 101, quite frankly, says that the very purpose of our lives is to know, love, serve the Lord, which is essentially to lead us to heaven. Now, if we ask ourselves, how do we get to heaven? The usual answer you'll get 
from whoever is be good, be kind, follow Christ's precepts. Follow what the church says. Goodness, kindness, follow Jesus. That's it. And don't get me wrong, that's correct. But one thing we like to shy away from, and I'm certainly included when I say we, not just you, me, myself included, is the cross. Jesus Christ is very clear in our gospel today that he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Now what do I mean by cross? Because a lot of times we just think of the cross of Jesus Christ. What are the crosses that we bear? I'd just like to speak on one particular saint that is loved amongst many, Saint Therese of Lisieux. Her life consisted of being at home and then being in the convent. She was a Carmelite nun. Now she is a doctor of the church, which meant she is really, really, really good at prayer. And you read her book, it's incredible. Now what she also speaks of is how impatient she was in the convent when it came to her sisters. She would pray and there were some sisters there that would just rub her the wrong way. And while she's seeking to, have the, to practice that presence of God, it's just burning her inside as she sees this one particular sister who just turns the pages the wrong way. And from there she gets frustrated. But then she recognizes this is the cross you've given me. Patience is a virtue. Now that's just one example, dear friends, of a particular cross that comes in our way. How often we are impatient on the road with our families, with your spouse, with your children, with your cousins, with the people in your workplace. How often we are impatient. That is a particular cross that is presented to us from Jesus Christ. And can I say, crosses are difficult. They're difficult. I often say in the confessional, crosses are not supposed to be posturepedic. They're not, they're not those nice beds that you get that help you as you sleep. They're supposed to be hard. You're supposed to struggle along the way. Jesus Christ, who is the standard of perfection, as he was carrying that cross from Jerusalem, outside Jerusalem, all the way to Calvary, stumbled three times. He fell three times as he's carrying that cross and he is perfection. He stumbled, went along the way, fell, got whipped. And so when you are asked to carry your particular cross in your lives and you know your crosses, often we beat ourselves up saying, I should, have been able to, I should be able to carry my cross all the way without stumbling because Jesus has given it to me. And so when we do fall, we, we beat ourselves up over the head and it's quite abusive to ourselves. I should be perfect. I should be able to make it along the way. But can I say, it's part of human nature. We're not perfect. Jesus Christ is the only perfect person who lived in this world and even he fell three times. And so when you fall, it's okay. The important thing is that when we decide, when we drop that cross, when we move away from it, when we say, I don't want this anymore, that we actually get up again. Now the one thing we also forget, dear friends, is that the way to perfection is already made. Crosses have been given to us. Some of you have many crosses. Some have few crosses. Some of the crosses you carry are so monumentous that sometimes it's crushing to you. And some of those crosses in your lives, you can easily carry. But regardless of how heavy that cross is, Christ has already shown us the way to perfection. And so one thing we also forget is that Jesus is with you carrying your cross. Christ had Simon of Cyrene walking with him along the way. Even he needed help. So are you, are you far from help? Absolutely not. But it's not Simon of Cyrene carrying it with you. It's our Lord carrying it with you. And he's the greatest help you can have. And so it's so important, dear friends, that when we recognize the crosses in our lives, that we accept these crosses. We receive them with thanks, but also know that Christ is there along the way. Is it supposed to be fun carrying a cross? No. If you like carrying your cross and you enjoy the suffering, I would be a little bit worried. A little bit worried if you enjoy suffering, because it's a little bit creepy. But the crosses there, dear friends, are your means to perfection. 
Why? Because we are made for heaven. We're made for eternal life. And so take on these crosses, shoulder them. Christ is there. He lightens the burden. And when you look back onto the crosses with which you've carried, you'll also notice that Christ carried it most of the way. You're only doing a little bit of work. Whilst it may seem like a lot, Christ is the one who carried it most of the way. And that's a great joy because that just shows the love he has for us. And he shows it on the cross, which you have here in your homes and probably around your neck. Remember those crosses, dear friends. It's the way to perfection, the way to eternal life. So let's ask for that grace today to walk the path of perfection, to carry our crosses and to not be afraid when it's presented to you because Christ is calling you to heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born in the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, by self-denial, we take up the cross each day, walking in the footsteps of our Master. Let us pray for others and so cast off the selfishness which keeps us apart from God. For Pope Francis, Bishop Vincent, and all the clergy. That they may think as God does, showing us the path to life in truth, even when it means the road of suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world. That those who lead nations will be true peacemakers. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers, grandfathers, and father figures. That they may follow the example of Saint Joseph, who was a humble partner to Mary and protector of the child Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves. That we may take our place among the disciples of Jesus, willing to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow him. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in distress. That they may come to see that they are under the shadow of God's wings. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, remembering particularly our deceased fathers. That they may soon be in God's sanctuary, satisfied with the riches of heaven's banquet. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, receive the prayers of a pilgrim people seeking to discover your will by walking the footsteps of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or the offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cosoginus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, 
and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith, therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, in the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Preceptis solitaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, au Deus dicere. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. We're going wrong, man. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Father. Peace be with you, everyone. Roman.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you like to be seated just for a moment? So yes, the, the rumors are true. I am leaving the parish. Uh, and I've been appointed the administrator of St. Thomas Aquinas in Springwood. Uh, and so my last day is um, four weeks from today. No, not that anyone's counting, but anyway, it's four weeks from today. And so uh, being that, that'll be my, my last parish mass here. And there'll be a, uh, I want to say celebration. I don't know, maybe it is a celebration that I'm leaving. But there'll be something in the cloister afterwards. And of course, you're most welcome. I think there'll be details for that next week. But, but pray for me uh, as I begin this uh, new, uh, new appointment uh, in Springwood, which I visited two days ago. And it's very different to here, which is a good thing. It's good, uh, but pray for me as I take on this new journey. Uh, thank you for your generosity to the Father's Day Appeal. It was well said by Deacon David. The, these men have served so well uh, the past few years, so um, for the last few decades. So please assist them uh, during their retirement. And you can certainly bring those envelopes next week as well, as Deacon David said. Uh, we do have Holy Hour vocations this Wednesday, the 6th of October at 7 p.m. in the chapel. And you're most welcome to come to that. On the 21st of September, we have the ordination to the priesthood of Deacon Tom Green. Uh, you're all, of course, welcome to that. The cathedral uh, is always happy to host the whole ordinations. Uh, but the most important thing is to pray for him. It's an exciting time leading up to an ordination. Uh, a very daunting and nervous time as well, uh, because it kind of sets in. It's like, oh my gosh, I actually need to be holy and bring people to the Lord. Uh, so it's, it's very important that you keep him in your prayers uh, and support him uh, as, he takes on, uh, as he takes on this wonderful sacrament. And of course, take the bulletin home for more Darston and Parish news. And of course, we haven't forgotten, today is Father's Day. So I do invite all the fathers to please stand. All our fathers. I had the school mass on Friday and half the children stood up and I said, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Fathers, please bow your heads. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers, that the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Fathers, thank you for everything that you do for your families and for the community. And I hope today you are spoilt. Please, spoil them. They deserve it. That's what I told the kids, spoil them. Children, be nice to your dads for one day in the year. Be nice to them, please. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the weakness of your devoted people stir your compassion, O oh Lord, we pray and let their faithful pleading win your mercy, that what they do not presume upon by their merits, they may receive by your generous pardon, through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go for the masses ended. Thanks be to God.